Hi everyone. Tonight I'm going to show you how to use the AI tool to change the background in a portrait. I will also show you how to modify your existing background so you can reuse it. So I have Paint Shop Pro open and this is 2022 Ultimate. You can get the 2023 version at paintshoppro.com. It comes with a 30-day free trial. So let me know if you try it and you like it. And if you have any questions, please post them below. I'm not affiliated with Corel or Paint Shop Pro. I've been using their software since 2009. Now, in the last couple of years, they came out with some new AI tools. And the background replacer is really cool. I wish it did uh, more than people, however, but you can make it work for other subjects. It's just a little more complicated. So I have my picture open here. And I have my background, and I made a copy of the background. Now to do that, just right-click on the background and hit Duplicate. Now you may not have to use the first background, but that's okay. At least it's there in case it messes up and you want to go back to the original. It's just the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to start with adjust and then scroll down to artificial intelligent and then you have your denoise artifact removal portrait mode and background replacement we're going to do the background replacement now it's going to pop it up on a new screen and we can refine this i'm going to zoom in just a little bit it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. And it, it sure saves a lot of time in the touch-ups that you have to do. Now to pan, you would click the little hand and then just move up and down the window of the portrait that pops up. So I'm going to start up here. And I am using my pen and my Wacom tablet. You can use your mouse, it's no problem. I'll often start with this brush that looks like a target because that is the refine brush. Now I'm just going to go around his hat and then this little space right there. And that did a pretty good job. And the same with her hat because of the fur. We don't want that flat or a straight line, and this tool will prevent that. Now for the sleeve of the coat, I see it's a bigger area that it didn't get. So I'm going to click the plus and add to the selection. You can adjust the brush size here. You can smooth out the stroke here. And you can feather it a little bit if you want and even change the border width. Now I like this background okay, but I wish they were not so close because then I could have did more of a depth of field. I'm gonna go back to the target mode. And I'm going to pay special attention to the feet and the boots here. And you can also reduce the brush to get into the smaller spaces. Let's zoom back in.
And I think that might be pretty good, actually. I do see one area right there. Now the red area is what will be removed. And basically this is like masking. Well, it is masking, but for masking you would use the paintbrush, the black and white paintbrush. It doesn't like the white areas for some reason. It thinks that's part of the background, I guess. All right, let's zoom out to see the whole thing. Okay, that's pretty good. So then you're going to go to next. And Paint Shop Pro comes with a variety of backgrounds for this purpose. And as you can see, this is not perfect, but I can certainly fix that once I get it to be a layer. So there's here's all the backgrounds. And I go to Mountain because it is a snow scene and click Done. Okay, now you can see there's one little area on her coat that it didn't quite get. So I'm clicked on the raster layer here with the transparency with the background removed. I'm going to go to the eraser brush, make it small enough, and just refine that a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. And that looks okay. I do like more of a blurred background. So of course you can still do that with this background. So I'm gonna click on the raster, go to effects or adjust. And then I'm gonna do a depth of field blur because I don't want the snow in the foreground to be blurred. And I don't know much. I, I want you to be able to see that there's still mountains there. Let's bring this down a little bit. Okay, now the background's blurred. And the foreground should be in focus. And you can change which is which by clicking invert here. then click OK. Now that will only affect this layer. And let me zoom in. You can see that the background is a lot softer. All right, now the next thing we can do, and I'm going to leave this here. I'm not going to change that. Work on my copy of my background. So let me bring this up to the top. And now I'm going to fill this area with the background and then I'll have to make some adjustments with the clone brush. But I'm going to show you how to use the object replacer or remover. So go to your clone menu Object Remover, and 
Now just draw a line around the object that you want to remove. It doesn't have to be exact, just make sure that you don't go over the edges here. There you go. <clears throat> now on your toolbar, you'll see this is where you made your um, selection, your freehand selection. Now you need to click, click this to select your source. Now we don't want to refill them with them. So I'm going to move this. And yes, we're going to get some repeating patterns, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. Just make sure there's none of the object in your picture that you're trying to remove or get outside your lines there. All right, now click the check mark. And see what it did? It replaced that. Now, it didn't add it to a new layer. It just filled this layer. And yes, that looks kind of silly. But I'm going to fix that. Okay, I'm going to select none. Now, what I want to try to do is blur the background <clears throat> so it looks like depth of field. But I have to make the foreground bigger in order to do that. So I'm going to start with that. So now I'm just going to paint in some snow. We'll go to paintbrush. And the regular paintbrush will do. But let's select the color of this snow. And zoom in. And now I'm going to paint. And yes, there is some texture in the snow. I would normally go ahead and do that. But that would take quite a while, so this time I'm not going to. All right, now that does give the illusion that the trees are a little bit farther back. And you can also just select that top layer. I'm going to use the auto selection. The top section, I should say. And it will follow my line here. And then I can use the pick tool and move that. So if I want to make it a little bit smaller, a little wider, Or even a little farther back. Now the pick tool gave it a promoted selection. But it didn't make a new layer. So now let's paint this. Oh, it did give it a new layer. So let's merge it down. Now I can paint this. And now I'm going to clone and fix the areas where it looks like there's a repeated pattern. It will also take that seam out so you'll have a seamless object 
replacement. Okay, now to use the clone tool, it's in this menu, clone. You right click on the area that you want to place in another area and then left click on that area. And that's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to blur that background. So go to adjust, depth of field. And you can make it as blurry as you'd like. I like to be able to still tell what it is. So I don't blur it out that much. Something like that. You can obviously see it's pine trees. Click OK. Now remember, I still have my raster layer here from the previous background removal. So I'm just going to move that up on top. And voila, we made a new background with depth of field on our existing background. Now, if I would want to save this, I would merge it all down and, of course, name it. Because that's the one I like the most. I'm going to fix this little dark area here. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. And thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next video. Have a good day.